great to be with you. Evan Leffler with Corey Alexander. And, hey, look, the Panthers are 9-3. and three. They could be better. They could be worse. Their defense has been great. The offense, looking for some consistency. Well, the difference in the Panthers this year, they have expectations. Talking with Coach Caper earlier today, guys are in a new position because they've never been expected to win before. But after a huge win over Florida State in Game 1, now the expectations are there. Can the results come? Corey, there was legitimate buzz after what they did last year, even though they only won three conference games. And then that win over Florida State on opening night, coming from behind to beat the Seminoles, that rose the expectations even higher. And then the letdown, the loss to Nichols State right after that. But since that point, they won the Fort Myers tip-off. They haven't played great basketball, but look, the ACC is a league right now that is, you, you can do some damage in. Well, they've shown they can win ACC games when you imagine the fact that they beat one of the top four teams most likely in the ACC this year in Florida State, and they have a backcourt that gives them an opportunity to win each and every game out. When you look at the numbers, of course, from Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan from a year ago, they're actually down from where they were before, and it's those expectations of consistent play where Jeff Cape was looking to be able to achieve once they get into ACC competition. And obviously, Johnson and McGowan's are so important for this team if they're going to be good in the ACC. For the, the opponent today, Canisius Malik Johnson, no relation to Xavier, he is the backbone of this Golden Griffin squad. He really is. Malik Johnson, of course, has an opportunity to be the all-time leading assist player for Canisius in their history is a chance to score a thousand points and is one of the top steals guys in the NCAA right now at 2.7 per game. So he's doing everything you can ask for his team at the point guard position. And he's a Richmond kid, so we know Corey's got some good stories about Malik Johnson. Beautiful day in Pittsburgh. Final game of the year. Canisius and Pittsburgh coming up next. On the old I've lost two homes in my lifetime. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Ready, give me your attention, the under Canisius and Pittsburgh are set for basketball battle. Our Corey Alexander was five and a half the last time these two teams met, not to give your age away. LS Tractor starting lineups, three freshmen for the Golden Griffins. And for Pittsburgh, no big surprises. McGowan's and Johnson needing to up those points per game in the backcourt for Jeff Capel. Well, Jeff Capel and Canisius coach Reggie Witherspoon have a bit of a history. And for more on that interesting background, we take it to Maggie Hetzel on our broadcast crew today. Maggie? Evan, they're good friends. They coached together with USA Basketball for the U18 team. Now, Jeff Capel, he was the head coach. Reggie Witherspoon was underneath him as an assistant coach. They spent 18 days in San Antonio together with the U18 team in 2010. Hey, a couple of names on that roster, by the way. Austin Rivers, Kyrie Irving, Patrick Young. How do you not have fun coaching those three guys? By the way, they won the gold medal, so you got to have fun with that, too. They both had great things to say about one another. They said they share a lot of the same values. Now, Coach Capel said, hey, this is the competition I'm coaching against him so friendship kind of goes out the window but coach Witherspoon said hey I wish I could sit with them and watch a couple of games and just chat with them but today I guess I'm coaching against them Reggie Witherspoon played at Erie Community College his head coach was John Beeline and obviously Jeff Capel has had plenty of good basketball tutors in his time in the game starting with his dad guy who's coaching the Duke Blue Devils Tim Comer flips it up in the air, and there's a lot of blue and gold in this building today because both these teams primarily wear blue and gold. It's Pittsburgh in their home whites. What are you looking to see today from Pittsburgh? They got Wake Forest coming up this Saturday to resume ACC play. Well, first, this is the first competition for Pittsburgh in 10 days, so early knocking down the three for Champagny. And that's one of the areas of concern for Jeff Capel is can this team consistently score from the outside? Their shooting hasn't been great this year, but very proud of the way they've defended. Malik Johnson's teardrop on the back door feet would not fall on the rebound for Hamilton. 
Yeah, Pittsburgh only shooting about 27% from three. But don't tell that to Justin Champagny, who's two for two in the opening minute. Well, apparently the break did Justin Champagny some good. Got some rest. Looks as though he got up a lot of reps from beyond the arc, and they started off with a great start, and then a big steal early. Champagne, not sure if he was thinking slam there. He was definitely points. thinking slam. It didn't work out like that, but now you see Trey McGow is picking up the defensive effort in the backcourt, trying to pressure Malik Johnson. Of course, if you're going to be Canisius, you have to cut the head off the snake. That's going to be Malik Johnson. And you see he's drawing a lot of attention early, but... Armand Harriet on the third chance draws the foul. He's one of the three freshmen in the Golden Griffin starting five. Eight straight for Justin Champagny before we can get our four keys to the game. Brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Corey, what you got today? Well, for Canisius, it's get to the free throw line right where Armand Harriet is right now. And because... Pitt does not give up many opportunities at the line. Their opponents are only getting 10.4 a game. And then, of course, for the Panthers, they've got to turn defense into offense. We talked about how good they are defensively. Now they need to make sure when they come up with those takeaways, they turn them into points on the other end of the floor. The shutout broken up by the one free throw from Harry. That was on Adi's Tony for Pittsburgh. One of the three talented freshmen who became sophomores this year for Jeff Capel. Traveling called on the grad transfer, Eric Hamilton. And a quick substitution off the Pittsburgh bench, Terrell Brown. You get the sense Jeff Capel is an interesting combination of frustrated and optimistic about what the next few months can possess. Well, you tell me one of the 353 Division I head coaches that is in some way frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> and I will have a special uh, reward for you. Everyone is frustrated at this point because conference play starts right around the corner. Of course, your team, some teams have been good, some not so good, but everyone needs to improve, and the coaches are always looking for areas to where they can do so. Yako Fritz had it swatted away inside, and then Scott Hitchin lost it out of bounds. Now, Canisius had their conference opener, Corey, a week ago. They lost a heartbreaker. They, they led by 11 at the half, led for nearly 30 minutes of the game, but... Siena's Elijah Burns at a game-winning three with nine seconds left, 73-72. So Canisius has had a week to think about that coming into today. You know, Canisius is also exploiting one of the weaknesses of this Pitt Panther team, which Jeff Capel talked to us about earlier, was their defensive rebounding. And early in the game, Canisius has done a great job on the offensive glass. They haven't been able to get the second-chance points, but continue to attack inside another offensive rebound. And this time, the putback. An opportunity for the hand one. Finally, a finish at the rim. The freshman from the Netherlands, Jaco Fritz, starting his ninth consecutive game today. Chance for a three-point play. Fritz has been a three-time Mac Rookie of the Week, three consecutive weeks. So, the young man has gotten off to a great start in his career with the Griff. Another offensive rebound. That's and, wild. And right now, you talk about frustration. I'm sure that's one of the areas where Jeff Capel is extremely frustrated. It's to continue to see teams picking up multiple opportunities on the offensive end of the floor. I'm not sure what's more impressive, the fact that Champagny had eight points in 90 seconds or that Canisius has four offensive rebounds in the first three minutes of the game. Terrell Brown, who picked up the foul the last trip, He's driving down the alley, banks it home. And Terrell Brown normally does the majority of his damage on the defensive end of the floor. Great shot blocker. But anything that he can give offensively to Pittsburgh is a bonus. Griffins turn it over again, and Pittsburgh in transition. Call for the offensive foul. Champagny did not agree with the call. Terrell Brown recognizing he has an angle to be able to get to the rim using the glass for two points. And Jeff Capel talked to us about trying to find someone that they can consistently give the basketball to as far as their interior presence that can give them easy baskets where it doesn't put so much pressure on their guards on every possession to be able to make a shot from distance. 
Here's Malik Johnson, who we discussed in the open, making his 111th consecutive start today for Canisius. And they started every game for Coach Witherspoon. We asked him about that earlier, said, you know, what was it about Malik that made you put him into the, into the starting lineup from day one? He said his competitive spirit is a young man that winning and losing matters to. And that first start was at Rupp Arena against the Kentucky Wildcats. Fun welcome to college basketball moment three years and a month and a half ago. Free throws on the other side of the break. Justin Champagny with an explosive start for the Panthers. They're doubling up Canisius 10-5. Hi. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Justin Champagny is trying to end 2019 with the bang. He's gotten off to a great start here in this one. Eight points early, two three-pointers. Getting out in transition, of course, doing the job defensively, coming up with the steal, and the finish on the other end of the floor has gotten hit off to an early 10-5 lead. And Champagny with those eight points continues on what has been a strong freshman season thus far. Panthers looking to win their sixth straight game in this building today. The last five wins in the Pete have come by an average of about 17 points per game. Adis Tony going the line. He was fouled by Yako Fritz. Tony averaging six points a game this year. His scoring, like Johnson and McGowan's, is also a little bit down from a year ago. But one of the things, of course, and, and Jeff Cape will talk to us about this earlier, the expectations of this team, and when you mention those three players, of course, the biggest jump that you normally make during your college career is from your freshman to your sophomore year. But those three guys, when you mentioned McGowan's, Xavier Johnson, and Adis Tony, those guys played so many minutes a year ago that it would, be, it would have been extremely difficult for them to have that level of a jump because they were the features of an offense as a freshman. So when you look at it, the expectations for them and where they are in the scouting report has gone way up to opponents, which has caused a lot of the, of the lack in numbers this season. Another offensive rebound and a third try on the trip. The dunk comes up hard, but the fourth attempt, and that three is good from the wing. Amon Harib with another bucket. And of course, this young man played for his father, Herman Tree Harid, for Lake Clifton High School in Baltimore, Maryland, who's back to back state champs. And Coach Harid, also USA basketball royalty. So we talked with Coach Witherspoon about him recruiting. That he knew her Marie from USA Basketball previously. That's a heck of a block by Terrell Brown denying the Griffin transition shot. And there's the Panthers. Ryan Murphy knocks down his first shot of the day. A great recognition by Xavier Johnson on that possession, not getting too deep into the paint and knowing where his shooters were. Communication and transition and allowing Murphy to walk right into a wide open three. Harid had it poked away. He recovers, though, and then missed the easy one inside and gives the foul on the gallons. Foul from Harid on that play, knowing that he missed the layup, trying to get it back. Fouls in that possession, and that's really, you know, honestly, it's a freshman mistake. Of course, he didn't want to miss the, the easy layup, but he's too important to this team to pick up fouls early in the game to commit that frustration foul. Pittsburgh so far, three of four from beyond the arc. Do you think this team can be a mid-30s percentage-wise ACC three-point shooting team? I believe so. I believe they have a number of guys who can make those shots. And a lot of it, too, has to do with, you know, taking the shots that you're comfortable with. And we've seen Champagny knock down two early. But it's a freshman year for him as we see a great defensive effort on the other end of the floor. Terrell Brown used to be in the guy that's blocking shots. <laughs> Not getting the block with Scott Hitchin coming up with a big one on that possession. Good timing from the Canadian junior. Shot clock winding down. Murphy forced to fire. Not sure that's the way they drew it up, but of course, 
when you've been struggling to shoot the ball from the perimeter, you'll take any look, especially when they go down. And Murphy making that look easy, but a very difficult shot. Panthers 80% from beyond the arc. I don't think that's sustainable. Why not? Because <laughs> this is basketball and not, not uh, I don't know what. Yeah, exactly. I want to know what you were saying, not what. <laughs> Anything you do at 80% in the realm of sports, you're pretty good. Barely spell my name right 80% of the time. I'll give you, I'll give you 85 on that. Your name, your name is misspelled in the, in the game notes yeah, today, right? I don't take it personally. So maybe it's other people spelling your name 80% of the time. Maybe. McGowan's kind of didn't know where he was going, but he's going to get two at the line. Foul called on Corey Brown. And Ryan Murphy at the end of the shot clock. Presence of mind to look at the other end and know there's only two seconds remaining. And when you shoot as well as Murphy does, sometimes... The benefit of doubt is on your side, as it was on that last possession. Trent Gallon's at the line, and Maggie has more on Trent. Well, Evan, Coach said that he is a gym rat. All he wants to do is get in the gym, and there's a couple of guys on this team that wants to really just be in the gym. And Coach said, hey, you know, while you're getting in the gym, it has to be consistent. You have to be able to do something. There. You can't just be going in the gym shooting around. You got to see some improvements from it. And he was in the gym yesterday after Kanisha's shoot around, ready to get in there, waiting for the guys to get out just so he can get a couple shots in. Yeah, good stuff. One thing to note, McGowan's and Johnson combined so far have four assists and no turnovers. That makes this moment the first time in their careers that they both had positive assist to turnover ratios. Jeff Capel pointed that out before the ball game. And Murphy, and he was not fouled from behind. That was great defense by Majesty Brandon. Yeah, Majesty Brandon does a great job getting back off of a nice find for Trey McGowan's in the steal. But you see Brandon getting in the way. And then the basketball actually goes off of Murphy. Great defensive effort by Pittsburgh, unable to turn it into points on the other end of the floor. And one thing to watch for Canisius today is Majesty Brandon. He's coming off a 30-point game in the conference opener against Siena. It's seven threes in that one, but he's called for a palming violation, his first touch offensively today. Boy, and that was just not recognition, of course. As his teammate went back door, Brandon was looking to move the basketball. So fourth into the turnover. Otherwise, it would have been over here. He probably would have thrown that one to me. <laughs> and I may have got a shot off. I'm trying to think. I'm, we're right at midcourt right now in this new. This, this is your range. I, I thank you. I agree. But this new uh, flip-flop floor design here at the PUC, which. Are you disoriented? I'm a little off. I'm a little off. Been here for a last year. His first game since November 15th, Gerald Drumgoul Jr. comes off the bench and scores. And, and a welcome back for him. He was a starter early in the year for Jeff Cable against the Florida State team. So he's a guy that they've been looking forward to getting back on the court. Glad to have him back after an ankle injury. Malik Johnson zips it to the corner. Fritz passes up the contested three, gets closer and puts it in. And you see Fritz has tremendous skill on the perimeter as well as playing in the post at six foot ten and getting out denying on the wing Canisius has a special player and Fritz moving forward and they say he can play the three the four or the five for him Murphy's too strong rebound for Malik Johnson and you know that was one of the best stats that I've seen thus far as Malik gets into the paint and finishes Malik Johnson averaging 5.2 rebounds per game and again, I've been around this young man for a very long time. Never knew him to be a rebounder. <laughs> but he is doing it all for the Griffs right now. When did you first meet Malik Johnson? Uh, probably a couple months after he was born. <laughs> and his father, Robert Johnson, good friend of mine. Malik looking like dad. Getting in the paint and finishing. He's worried you're going to talk trash about him today. <laughs> he knows it's coming. <laughs> Winter is we thought we lost everything in that fire, but my independent agent and auto owners made sure we were up and running fast. That's what mattered to us. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Ready, give me your attention, the under.
the Peterson Event Center has sparkled ever since it opened in 2002, but some new renovations this year. They flipped the court, brand new scoreboard, and there's a look at the stats, which has the Panthers in front early here in this first half. For a little more on the new additions to the Pete, we send it to Maggie Hetzel. Evan Peterson events that are sparkling even more now. It, it really sparkles with all the new additions Coach Capel and his team has made. They added a new video room, a new arrival hall. You're going to see six new video boards in here. So every angle, you're going to be able to see this game. They've added a nutrition and team lounge. And he said everyone involved in this program is really getting excited about all these new additions. And you know in recruiting and college athletics in general how important it is. They did add in kind of a recruiting hall type area, uh, a great and entrance and uh, Corey, I, I mean, the flip, the flip court is it's, it's getting you. It, it threw me off a little bit, Maggie. But this is my question for you, as well as you know, Mr. Leffler here. Uh -oh. The bridge that's on top of the scoreboard. What bridge is that? I see that out of my hotel room at times. I, I, I don't know what bridge that is. I can't see the bridge from here. Well, you saw the picture in the in the of the scoreboard. I was looking at the stats that were just handed to me. <laughs> Way to get out of that one. I need an answer for that. But I think it's the Clemente Bridge. You think? I think. You know what? I'm not sure that he's a Pittsburgh legend. Oh, that, that he is. No question about it. McGowan's hangs in the air, can't finish, and Canisius has the rebound. You know what the first event in this building was back in 2002? I do not know. It was a Counting Crows concert. Do you have a favorite Counting Crows song? I'm going to go with the no on that one as well. Unbelievable. Gotta get you listening to a little uh, little crows later today. A bit of rapid pace up and down in this one. Malik Johnson, of course, with the assist, but looks back to his coach and says, my fault for the behind-the-back pass that he threw right on point to one of the Pitt Panthers, although they're wearing the different uniforms that he is in this game, so making up for the mistake. Jelani, Jelani White got the two, and it's a 6-0 run now for Canisius. That Champagne snaps with his third. Three and a half. And Penny kind of gives a look to the bench like, what's going on? Why am I making all these shots? Don't look at the bench like that, young fella. Look and say, get me more shots. You see me doing what I'm doing right now. I mean, Penny was shooting a robust 14% from three coming into today. We'll say like Fat Joe, his numbers have gone way up. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Corey Brown gets two inside, no relation to Terrell. But yeah, Penny was five for 37. And a six-game stretch in November where he scored in double figures all six games, averaged 14 a game, then had a little bit of a dip this past month. But he's a capable scorer, I and mean, this has to be a confidence builder heading into the weight game this Saturday. Bump foul called on Brown on the perimeter. That's his second. Eight-point lead for the Panthers, so we're trying to get to 10-3 and three at the turn of the calendar. They were 10-3 and three in non-conference play last year, which would be the same exact record at the end of December if they could win today. The difference being, of course, they're not 10-3 and three in the non-conference with a win today because they got two conference games mixed in before January this year. Yeah, new 20-game ACC schedule. So, of course, two of those games are higher quality games than what they normally would have seen in non-conference. But we've mentioned the win over Florida State early. I mean, who had a tougher... November, December ACC schedule than Pitt. Well, Pitt's had a very tough schedule, but of course, Jeff Cape was going to schedule tough, you know, in the non-conference to get his team prepared for what they're going to see during ACC play. And, you know, I mean, I would say that they get a definitely get a passing grade thus far in non-conference. You have the hiccup versus Nickel State. And of course, you've got the loss at Louisville, which there's no shame in that one. You know, but they did represent the ACC very well in the ACC Big Ten Challenge with the win over Rutgers. So I'm giving Pitt a passing grade so far on a team that is still improving. And they found a way to win some games where statistically it was pretty ugly. Yes, the Kansas State game yeah. in particular, two assists, 22 turnovers in that game and still able to come away with a win. But that speaks to the level of defense that Jeff Capel's team is playing right now. Tony unable to control that rebound, so it's another offensive board for the Canisius Golden Griffins. Reviewing the stats for the season coming into today and to see Xavier Johnson have zero assists and eight turnovers and 
Uh, other guys on the team had miserable shoot nights, and they still won that game against K-State. And Xavier Johnson actually fouled out of that game as well, and that's the only game they've won this year of the three games that he's fouled out of. Whoa, wow, great pass. It was interesting. I don't know if I'd characterize it as a great pass, but it was interesting. Well, he, that's a great pass, and Tony inside has a chance for three. I will agree that that was a great pass by Xavier Johnson. But great passes, great passes go to a teammate. This pass goes to a teammate. And you see, of course, on the other end of the floor, Xavier Johnson's pass goes to a teammate who's able to finish it off for an opportunity for the and one. But he's Tony, this second trip to the line. You're kidding me, right? No, I'm not kidding. It's a great pass. Now, see, now, had he thrown that off the glass like that and gone and dunked it, you would have thought it was a great play, right? <laughs> Okay, so he didn't dunk it. Oh, well, still a great thing. The foul was called on Majesty Brandon, who scored 30 in the game a week ago, has not scored yet today for the Golden Griffins, who trailed by 11 after Tony's three-point play. Yeah, you come off the bench and get 30 in the game, you best believe the coaches from the opposing team, the next game you play, will be yelling every time you catch the basketball. Shooter. Seven three-pointers. Pittsburgh morphing into his own here. Yeah, and of course, it's thrown Denise's off a bit and another turnover as Terrell Brown comes up. Now, if I'm Terrell Brown, I don't want to steal. I want to block shot. You're talking about a young man who's working on his way to getting into the top five block shots all time for the Panthers. I want to block shot on that. Murphy looking high. Pass was a little off. Malik Johnson, nice behind the back dribble. Nice finish by Malik going in amongst the trees. One thing I can tell you about this young man, never scared of anything. And of course, the opportunity, the bigger the opponent, normally the better he's going to play. Loves to be on this level of the stage. He's in his third year as a captain. And there aren't too many three-year captains in front of the basketball. now with 13 first half points for Pitt. Pittsburgh back in the zone. Got a stop on their first trip in the zone. Do coaches expect to get a stop of their first zone defensive possession just because of the surprise? Well, I think oftentimes because if you, one, you lose so much time, you think about it right now, only five seconds remaining on the shot clock. Here's Brandon. But this is the one area where it can be a struggle in the zone is defensive rebound. And Jeff Capel has said already it is a problem for his team. And we've seen in this game alone already now, I believe that's eight offensive rebounds for Canisius so far here in this first half. To the corner for the hot hand. Unable to dial long distance there. Timeout on the floor will take it as well with Pittsburgh up by nine. Turn. You don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. And his turnover. Xavier Johnson the other way. Coach Witherspoon wanted to travel on McGowan's inside. Terrell Brown working on the smaller Jelani White. Good help defense there by Harid. Armand Harid, I like what he's doing out here early in this game, being very aggressive. And I love the fact that Coach Weatherspoon does has no problem starting his freshman. He and Akramami getting in the starting lineup as well as Jacob Priest. So they, he has a number of freshmen to help carry this program into the future that are helping him from day one and getting their opportunities and being aggressive, more importantly. Canisius sitting at five and six. A year ago, they went 15 and 17, but the two years before that, they had winning seasons. 121 ball games two years ago, 15 and three in the league. They were upset, of course, in the match 
quarters that year. Xavier Johnson that was halfway down with the step. And only the second field goal attempt for Xavier Johnson in this game. We're talking about a young man who we've seen put up big numbers as Reed knocks down another three in the corner. And Kanisha's hanging around here. They are, and they've been able to do it with the offensive rebounding, and now you see them starting to become more and more comfortable on the offensive end of the floor against this Panthers defense. By the way, when I asked you your favorite Counting Crows song, you could have said hanging around. When you said Counting Crows, I honestly thought you meant there were people in here like bringing crows in and actually counting them. You've got to listen to more 90s pop. Here's her read from the corner. Go with no on that one as well. Closing it on three minutes to play in the half. Xavier Johnson sizing up Jelani White. Lost it, recovered. Dishes for Brown inside. And he draws the foul. And who's it going to be on? I think they got Harid, and that is his second. Well, Harid knocking down the three in the corner. His dad is home watching. Three. He's throwing up the three for five. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Ready, give me your attention, the underbars. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. And Husqvarna. All-star lawns start with auto mower. Back at the Peterson Event Center, there's a look at the Clemente Bridge. Thank you. This Google. is one of two <laughs> games in the ACC today. The Tar Heels have a tough one tonight. The Yale Bulldogs, who are a pretty strong team out of the Ivy League, just won at Clemson a week ago. Well, realistically, every game is going to be a tough one for the Tar Heels coming up, of course, considering Cole Anthony out four to six weeks with the injury to his knee. And they struggled without Cole in the lineup. And, of course, this wasn't a great North Carolina team in the first place with him. Of course, they needed heroic effort from them in the game. The season over against Notre Dame, 34 points for him. And it's going to be a struggle, honestly, for North Carolina. And my question, one of the teams were the question, will they actually make the NCAA tournament or not this season? Terrell Brown at the line out of the timeout. You know Cole Anthony pretty well. There's been some speculation that maybe he won't return. I personally think he will play again. Do you have a thought or insight on that? Well, you personally think he'll play again, so I'll just go with what you think. <laughs> That's a heck of a cop-out right there. I'm an insider. There's certain insider information you don't give away. Majesty Brandon gets inside and gets two. And you see Majesty Brandon, his ability to finish in the paint as well as shoot the basketball. And I want to see him get to the free throw line. Maggie told me earlier that he's got an interesting routine. <laughs> we'll see if uh, Brandon can get his free throw attempts today. He only has 19 attempts in 11 games this year. One and one coming up here after the foul on Jaco Fritz, which was his second. Thank you, pardon. Two shots for Trey McGowan's here. Sophomore from Pendleton, South Carolina, out of Hargrave. What do you think Trey McGowan's was going to be when you saw him before coming to Pitt? Well, I can tell you right now, and it's interesting to see Ackermanee playing against Trey McGowan's because we had that matchup in our annual Oak Hill Hargrave scrimmage, and Trey McGowan's flat out destroyed us. I know it was over 30 points. I'm not sure what the number was, the second number, but I know the first number was three, and he defensively. <laughs> just terrorized us in that game and a team that had of course Keldon Johnson and David McCormick two McDonald's All-Americans beautiful find from Malik Johnson and great recovery it wasn't a perfect pass but White caught it came down reestablished his momentum and then slammed it in well let me ask you this question did the receiver catch it yes did he finish it yes then it was a perfect pass 
so I'm not sure why you're talking about <laughs> it wasn't the perfect pass. I think he wasn't going for the alley-oop there. <laughs> Let's take a look. This is a great pass, Malik Johnson. And, of course, this could have been finished easily by White, but White smartly recognized as a defender coming over, comes down instead of trying to finish over Champagny and is able to get the easier dunk. I know you always want to give the credit to the guard. Maybe that was maybe, said, maybe that was a perfect I just pass. Said that White did a great job of recognizing that there was a defender coming over. I think the timing was a little off. It was a, it was a nice pass though. That's Again, another good one. That is your opinion. <laughs> they got a foul here, which will create free throws for the Golden Griffins and a chance to get within three. The final 80 seconds of this half. I tell you who will think it was a perfect pass. That would be one Reggie Witherspoon because it was a design play for the lob, and they got two points out of it. Perfect pass. I'd like to respond, but first we got a quick word from Works. The Works Switch Driver. With two rotating chucks, you can switch between bits in a second and get projects done twice as fast. I'm glad we got to listen to Works instead of your response. I would much prefer to listen to that. This is the closest the game has been, Corey, since it was 3 nothing. And remember, it became 8 nothing with Champagny erupting in the first 90 seconds. And Kinesis is doing the job defensively. Xavier Johnson only three field goal attempts. And you see the level of attention he's getting from a very good defender, Malik Johnson. And, of course, Xavier Johnson taking on the battle, doing a great job with the pump fake, getting Malik in the air and getting to the free throw line. Uh -huh. And this is really where Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan's excelled last year, especially in the non-conference. These two guys lived at the free throw line. They played always going downhill, getting to the rim, challenging the bigger defenders, and getting fouled. That's one of the areas where their numbers have dropped for both of them. You know, in this non-conference play is because they're not getting to the free throw line as much. Xavier Johnson's points are down, obviously. His field goal percentage is actually up a tick. And his free throw percentage is fine, but he's only getting the free throw line about three times a game, where last year was six times a game. So you just wasted 15 seconds of saying exactly what I just said previously? I was quantifying your qualitative comment. <laughs> I feel like we're in a good rhythm right now, you and I. <laughs> we were until you started taking shots at me earlier. See, I was being nice. That was during the break, Corey. <laughs> Get over it. Now we got to let folks know what I took a shot at you about. Yeah, something had to do with defense. Well, it was a defensive graphic, and I said, could Corey really comment on this? Because defense wasn't your forte. I've been... How do you know? I just, You're I've seven been, years old. Randolph <laughs> told me. <laughs> Believe me. Please don't take any defensive advice from that guy. Between the two of us, I was definitely the defender. Talking about Randolph Childress, who will be here at the Peterson Event Center as an assistant coach for Wake Forest, your old teammate. Deacons and Panthers coming up this Saturday at noon on your regional sports network. About a six-second differential between the game and shot clock to the corner. Open man, and Drumgoole comes up empty but gets it back and gets fouled. And Drumgoole aggressive. In this game, of course, for his return after missing the last eight games with an ankle injury, is unable to make the three, but does a great job to give Trey McGowan's credit for helping out with that offensive rebound. And Drumgoole attacking the basket. Now the opportunity to put two more points on the board for the Panthers. For the record, I obviously was kidding. I know that to play for the San Antonio Spurs, you had to defend. <laughs> no, nah, don't try to be my friend now. <laughs> See, and normally I'm the one taking shots at you. Seriously, well, this and, is. This and I have taken the first half off of taking shots at you. But you didn't let that go. You had to start, you know, coming at me. So you know, now for the, the, I used to prepare be prepared for the, the game. second half just I, so that you I, know. I used to prepare for the game, and now I prepare ammo for you because <laughs> I know I've got to be ready. Which you should. I appreciate that. That means you were growing in our relationship. And Coach Witherspoon right now, as his team continues to grow, Started off the game three for 12 from the field, but since then, 55%. Well, you think about how many close looks they missed early on inside. Off the offensive rebounds. Right. They did a great job attacking the basket, coming up with offensive rebounds, just unable to put them back early in the game. But right now, and of course, this is a teaching point for 
Coach Winsburn and his team, five seconds remaining, and we'll see Pittsburgh with the full court pressure, but five seconds is more than enough time to get a quality look to end the half. Nisha Scott within four, and the last four points have been scored by the Panthers. What can they do in the final five seconds? Good spot for Malik Johnson. Malik, teardrop. And the Golden Griffins are here to play. I felt like they had enough time, but of course, when you've got Malik Johnson at your point guard, five seconds is more than enough time to be able to attack the basket. A great job getting out of transition and not slowing down at all once he sees the bigger defenders. You know I'm not a fan of floaters, except for when they go in. Let's go to Maggie with Coach Cable. Coach, we talked about shooting in pregame in your offense. You're 50% from the field and beyond the arc. What have you seen from your offense? Well, we played no defense at all. This has been very disappointing. We've done none of the dirty work, no loose balls. Our rebounding has been atrocious. Thank goodness we've made some shots. But it's almost as if we think we can just outscore this team. It's been really, really bad. It's, as bad as it's been all year for us on the defensive side of the ball. We got to make a change. What adjustments are you telling your team at half? We have to rebound. That's the very first thing. We got to keep guys out of our paint. But the main thing is that our energy on the defensive end. We have to get out of the mentality that we're just going to continue to make shots. We have to do all the dirty work, which we've done all year. But for whatever reason, we didn't do it the first 20 minutes. Thanks, Coach. Evan. Pretty direct message from Coach Jeff Capel, the second-year leader of this Pittsburgh program. Imagine he will get his teammates' ears in the locker room. Pittsburgh led by double figures at one point, but it's a six-point game at the half on New Year's Eve Eve here in the Steel City. Winter. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire. But my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're going to rebuild. We've got 25 employees who depended on it. And that's all that mattered to me. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. Incredible. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Pittsburgh, the Panthers in front, 42 to 36, behind 13 points from Justin Champagny. Panthers shoot 50%, but Jeff Capel disappointed. His team allowed 12 offensive rebounds and 12 second chance points. We're going to take a timeout. When we return, we will look ahead to 2020. ACC conference play resumes this week. We'll talk about the upcoming schedule on the other side of the break. We thought we lost everything in that fire. But my independent agent and auto owners made sure we were up and running fast. That's what mattered to us. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Ready, give me your attention, the under Step of a new year. We welcome you back to Pittsburgh, who leads 42 36. Welcome courtside with Corey Alexander. I am Evan Leffler. Really excited for ACC play to return. And the interesting thing, Corey, I think about the league is that there are a lot of teams in this middle of the pack, and I wonder which one of them can take advantage of kind of the iffiness of a lot of the teams and make a run. Well, I agree, but when you say the middle of the pack, are you saying that there is a top of the pack in this league right I, now? I think there is. Okay, if you feel that way, because right now I feel there's a tremendous amount of parity in the ACC. I don't think that, I mean, when you look at Duke and Louisville, maybe they're better, but I'm not sure that they will beat Virginia on any given night or Florida State, so I'm not sure that there really is a top of the league. I think right now you got a lot of even teams. There are some burning questions about this league right now. <laughs> Let's look ahead. How many teams do you think will make the tournament? I believe this will be a low point for the ACC this year compared to you normally getting nine and eight teams into the NCAA tournament. I don't think we will get that many this year. And then, of course, a lot of it has to do with the consistency. Right now, the ACC is such a young league that there haven't been many teams that shoot the basketball consistently enough to be successful. We talked about North Carolina earlier. They're down this year. I'm not sure they make the NCAA tournament. And who steps up to the forefront?
front of the league without them being at the part of it. And then, of course, for the Cardinals, is Louisville elite. We've seen them be great. We've also seen them struggle to shoot and have their issues. Of course, Jordan Wara playing at an all-ACC, ACC player of the year level, but his efficiency hasn't been great. No. In the Michigan win, he was 9 for 23 from the field. Of course, did not have a very good game at the Madison Square Garden against Texas Tech. And we've seen, of course, them also lose to Kentucky, which hasn't been, it's not a great team. So when you look at the Louisville team, not 100% certain that they're elite, especially considering what we've seen from the ACC over the previous five seasons or so. It's an exciting game with the Cardinals and the Wildcats. Went to overtime, Kentucky pulled it out. But I'm with you. It's an interesting league this year because there are opportunities. I wonder, can a team like NC State put the pieces together? Well, I believe. NC State is an NCAA tournament team this year. I think they're one of the teams that can benefit from North Carolina being down and of course because they do have the veterans in their lineup. They do have consistent shooting and so they have an opportunity to be successful this season. Pittsburgh Panthers, another team with visions of rising in the conference, but a battle today. It's a six-point game after that Malik Johnson buzzer beater to close out the half. We thought we lost everything in that fire. But my independent agent and auto owners made sure we were up and running fast. That's what mattered to us. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Ready, give me your attention, the under. CC College Hoops is brought to you by the Works Switch Driver 2-in-1 Drill and Driver. And by LS Tractor. Visit us at lstractorusa.com. We are a few minutes away from the start of the second half. The Pitt Panthers trying to get to 10-3, and three, but we saw at halftime Jeff Capel was less than pleased with his team's first half performance. You've known Jeff for a long time. What do you think his tone and tenor was like in the locker room? Uh, well, not, it wasn't light. I'll tell you that right <laughs> now. It was a, a high-volume tone to his team, and especially letting them know that if you're not going to do the job defensively, you're not going to play. But the biggest number when you look at these stats, the 12 offensive rebounds, for Kinesis, where they've turned into 12 second chance points. That is a huge number. When you look at the turnovers, of course, Kinesis had to help themselves with the 10 turnovers, and but they still lead in fast break points. As Jeff Capel said, thank goodness we've made some shots. They've made six threes, shooting 50% from beyond the arc. That is the difference in the game right now. Ryan Murphy hit three of those threes, and the Panthers take a six-point lead in the second half when we return. You don't think it'll happen to you, and you surely don't think it'll happen twice. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. First, it was a fire. My agent was right there and helped me rebuild. Then the tornado hit and destroyed everything again. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Passion, effort, preparation. These are the attributes that make great football players. Gloria, hmm? what are your football players made of? Smoked sausage. Smoked sausage? Yes. I do this before every game for good luck. Well, hopefully this smoked sausage superstition can make its way to the field successfully. Hmm. Very good. Gloria, that man just ate your quarterback. Eckridge smoked sausage for your home gate. Come on, Johnny. Moments away from the start of the second half with Pittsburgh in front of Canisius, 42-36. Moments ago, our Maggie Hetzel caught up with Golden Griffin's coach, Reggie Witherspoon. Coach, 12 offensive rebounds, 12 second chance points. How pleased are you with your team's play off the glass and their effort? Well, I think if we can sustain it and maybe even improve it a little bit energy-wise, but it has definitely helped us. Uh, in terms of our offensive output to get some second chance points is something we emphasize going into the game. Thanks so much, Coach. You're welcome. Reggie Witherspoon was the head coach at Buffalo from 1999 to 2013 at 420-win seasons. Couple times named the MAC Coach of the Year. Now coaching the MAC, the Metro Atlantic <laughs> Athletic Conference compared to the Mid-American Conference. But staying in the same city and just a three-hour drive from Pittsburgh. Easy trip for Canisius. 
Jelani White has given the Golden Griff some good work off the bench. And Jelani White, of course, was so aggressive on the offensive glass. Five offensive boards for him, and you talk about those second-chance points. Early in the game, Canisius was unable to score on those second-chance opportunities, but when White came in, he was able to convert on many of those and continues to, you know, play so well that Coach Witherspoon has him in the starting lineup to start the second half. Xavier Johnson had two points in that first half. He was 0 for 3 from the floor. Trey McGowan's up and under, and I think Fritz got a piece of that shot. And fouls on Pittsburgh. It's going to be Canisius ball going the other way. And you see a change from Jeff Capel because of the defensive effort as well. Terrell Brown starting the second half of this one. And you see now going back to the man-to-man, -man, Pittsburgh going to pick up full court. McGowan getting the... Assignment to guard Malik Johnson. Terrell, Terrell Brown, excuse me, Corey, did just pick up his third foul on that first possession of the second half. Malik Johnson exploding to the basket. And that was the reason I said the assignment is because Malik Johnson is the guy that makes everything go for Kinesis. And you see him getting into the paint, more than willing to get into the paint and score. He's also their lead scorer, close to 14 points per game. But most of the time attacks to be able to find his teammates and get them good looks. Xavier Johnson, not his day so far. Wanted to ask you what you want to see from him here in the second half. Well, I'd like to see him be more aggressive in attacking the paint the same way Malik Johnson is going to one in the floor. And now Majesty getting involved in this game. And, you know, Majesty Brandon, we talked about 30 points off the bench. Versus Siena last time out a week ago. And we know he can get hot in a hurry. He scored more than a thousand points in two years at Monroe Community College. Junior in his first year at the D1 level. And that's one of those plays. And I asked Jeff Cape about it earlier as we get an opportunity to see Madison Brown get out in transition and going to the pull-up. But you also see Xavier Johnson with the push-off. And that's one of those fouls that Johnson has to stay away from that gives him a turnover. And right now, Kinesis with the basketball and an opportunity to tie or take a lead. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Give me your attention, the underfoot like yours. Made it through. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Making moves. I need some more. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The Pitt Panthers have their hands full on this final game of the year. Canisius, since they started slowly, is 3 for 12 early, shooting well over 50% since. And Jeff Capel calling a timeout because he didn't like his team's mojo in the first 83 seconds of the second half. Well, it, especially when you end the half on a play where Malik Johnson gets 94 feet and is able to score at the buzzer. And you haven't done the drop defensively. And then to come out and give up four straight points. I'm sure Jeff Capel has some spirited words for his players about their defense. And of course, they come out and get the turnover off of the design lob from Canisius out of the timeout. Trey McGowan's gonna get to the free throw line at the other end. Majesty Brandon picks up his second foul. And Johnson and McGowan's right now have combined for six points. The scoring has been from Champagny and Murphy and Tony. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that, I mean, again, if we rewind a year ago and watching these Panthers play, you saw Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan flying up and down the floor in attack mode at all times. And one of the things that Jeff Capel talked to us about earlier today was, of course, with the expectations, maybe he felt like some of his, his guys, especially those two guys, lost a little bit of their hunger. And, you know, people talk about how great these guys were a year ago, but the problem comes in when you start to believe it. And look, there have been some acknowledged questions of confidence over the course of the last month. And they've been trying to build this duo in the backcourt back up to be what they need them to be. Well, realistically, this could be, when you look at the talent of these two young players, this could be the best backcourt in the ACC. When you think about it and you say, okay, well, 
you know, both of these guys have put up 30 points as freshmen. And you see McGowan once again getting into the paint in the finish. And of course, that's where he's so great. But both of them defensively can change games. Wow. Brandon throws it away. That's the second time we've seen that miscommunication from Kinesis. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that Pittsburgh defensively is way out on the floor in passing lanes. You see Terrell Brown not really even getting much into the passing lane on that one. White was just going back door and just a miscommunication between he and Brandon. McGowan hangs in the air, can't finish. Champagne on the glass tied up. Were you talking with Majesty before the game and asking him to throw you a pass? I, it, no, it was the second time he's looked my direction, though. And Majesty knows, of course, you know, I'm a shooter. Yeah. So he's going to try to get an assist because Majesty's not much of an assist guy. <laughs> he's more of a scorer. So if he's going to pass the basketball, he wants to give it somebody that can make a shot. You notice it wasn't in your direction at all. Well, it wasn't a great pass. Oh, okay. I will agree because it did not go to the intended opponent. That was not a great pass. Maybe this gets Xavier Johnson going. Again, you continue to see the Panthers way out in the passing lane. You're talking 35, 40 feet away from the basket, but they're still denying. And that's one of the ways where Jeff Cape was talking about this team being so good defensively in a way that they can turn their defense into offense and another possession when they come up with a turnover. Since that timeout with 1837, they've turned it up a few notches defensively. Well, they have, and you've seen the number of plays where they've been able to get out of transition. Xavier Johnson, this time, textbook denial, tapping the basketball out into the front court and then going tracking it down, finishing the layup. Pittsburgh has forced turnovers on four of the last five Golden Griffins possessions. By the way, let's play a quick game of Educate Corey. Uh-oh. Do you know what a Golden Griffin is? For the, oh, let's go back. Before we educate Corey, you do realize I have a degree from the University of Virginia, correct? I don't saying, need your education. I'm not saying <laughs> that you don't know lots of things. Okay. But I know that this is your first chance to so come. I don't want to know what a Golden Griffin is. How about that? Does that answer your question? Where's your thirst for knowledge? <laughs> not in Golden Griffin. Mr. Monticello. <laughs> Not as Golden Griffin. So did I just ruin your game of HK Corey? You did. That you was ruined it completely. Thank you. That's what I was out after. It's a it's a half eagle, half lion. That does not exist. Oh, it's a mythical. Have creature. you ever seen one? It's a mythical. Have creature. you ever seen one? <laughs> Back to basketball because Corey wants to have no fun. <laughs> I have fun with basketball. There's a good steal. Brandon takes it away. And then he turns it right back over. And the Panthers have numbers. Johnson had it stripped from behind by the sneaky Malik Johnson who stumbled. Then McGowan's dove for it. Brown and fires and hits a three. Now that was a perfect opportunity for you to say Johnson from Johnson. Johnson to Johnson. Any of those things. And you let that opportunity go. Come on, Leffler. You're better than that. <laughs> oh, boy. Happy New Year to you, too, buddy. <laughs> Here's Champagne for three. Got it! He continues to find opportunities from Young and three-point arc, knocking him down. Champagne's fourth three-pointer on the afternoon. To extend the lead back to seven. Well, there, the Panthers. There's another Johnson in the ACC who might be a little dismirched by you calling Pittsburgh's Johnson and McGowan's the best backcourt in the ACC. Okay, who would that Johnson be? Markell. Okay, so are you saying that Markell Johnson and Braxton Beverly are better than Trey McGowan and Xavier Johnson? C.J. Bryce not qualify as a backcourt guy? No, because he's a forward. He's a he's a he's a he's a backcourt Again, guy. He's a wing. Your opinion. <laughs> Scott Hitchin made the three to bring the Griffs back within four. And Hitchin, of course, a capable score. 29-point game early for him this season. Fouls on Malik Johnson sending Tony to the line when we return. Five minutes gone, second half. The Canisius Golden Griffins, five and six on the year, but battling tough today on the road in Pittsburgh. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire, but my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're gonna rebuild. We've got 25 employees who depended on it. 
And that's all that mattered to me. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. Incredible. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Grubhub, America's leader in food delivery, just got better. Introducing Perks, millions of dollars in deals and free food nationwide. Download the Grubhub app today and get free delivery on your first order. Hi again. That belongs to me. How you feeling? Four point game here at the Peterson Event Center with Pittsburgh in front of Canisius. These two teams meeting for the first time since Larry Bird was at Indiana State in 1978. Justin Champagny is the Panthers' leading scorer today at 13 in the first half. He's 6 of 7 from the floor over all 16 points, 22 minutes. And 4 for 5 from beyond the three-point arc. We've talked about Pittsburgh needing to find some consistent shooting, and they've been able to do so thus far this afternoon. And Champagny from beyond the arc. He and Murphy, of course, have all of the three-point field goals made for the Panthers. And, of course, this freshman, as he continues to grow he only helps his team benefit and at that forward position his ability to shoot the basketball oftentimes opens up things for the interior for his teammates to be able to penetrate one thing to note Canisius does not have an offensive rebound in the first five minutes of the second half uh, these Tony at the line of course they had 12 in the first half but you also realize that they've made five field goals in the second half and Oftentimes when you're making shots, you don't get a chance off the screen. That's a fantastic counterpoint. There you go. They are four for five. Moments ago, Maggie was listening into the huddle. Let's go to her. It sounds, he just said, you have to get stops. You have to get stops. And how heated he was about the defensive performance going into half. You can understand that's what he's hitting on in the huddle. And Corey, you know, sometimes it's not easy to get those stops that they're talking about. Maggie, it's really not, especially when a team starts to find some rhythm on the offensive end of the floor, like Canisius has done. Justin Champagny has done now his fifth three-pointer on the afternoon. And the way that Pittsburgh has been able to stop Canisius has been through the turnover. But Canisius has gotten shots. They've shot the great percentage in the second half. But turnovers, Xavier Johnson getting back and picking off the cross-court pass and then turning it into another assist, cross-court pass to Champagny, who was able to knock down his fifth three. In the first 12 games of his college career, Justin Champagny went 5 for 37 from 3. And because sports sometimes make little sense, today he's 5 for 6 and looks like a sharpshooter for the ages. And now that Pittsburgh goes back to the zone defense, and you mentioned, of course, the offensive rebounding. Prior to this point, we'll have to see if they go back to having that level of excellence on the glass that they had in the first half because it's much more difficult to defensive rebound out of his own defense. Kickball was the call. Champagne now two points away from his career high. Remember he scored 21 against Northwestern in late November. Pretty good trap in the corner there. Nice pass by Brandon to get out of it. Still 12 to shoot for Canisius. And they turn it over for the 17th time. Seven of those here in the second half. And McGowan's traveled before the shot. You see McGowan's getting out in transition. Did he walk? Um, did they call a walk? <laughs> I told you, you're getting it in the second half. I was leaving you alone in the first half. I was being a gracious host, and yet you kept coming at me. So I told you, in the second half, the tables will turn. But to answer your question, yes, he walked because this great officiating crew of Jeff Anderson, Earl, w Earl Walton, and Tim Comer, somebody called to travel, which means, yes, he traveled. I love how you won't ruffle anyone's feathers but mine. <laughs> well, you're the only one with feathers. <laughs> so, therefore, 
It's called deductive reasoning. If you have feathers, I can ruffle them. Abdul Kareem Koulibaly has come into the game for the first time. Meanwhile, the foul was on Majesty Brandon. That's his third. Koulibaly scored a season high nine points against Binghamton in the Pittsburgh win. Panthers forced a season high 27 turnovers in that game, and they forced 17 turnovers, make it 18 now so far today. Well, and that was one of our four keys to the game was to turn the defense into offense, turning the basketball over, and more importantly, taking advantage of those opportunities in transition. Ryan Murphy Another beautiful find from Xavier Johnson as he continues to distribute the basketball extremely well in this game, finding his teammates. It seems so every three-point opportunity they get is coming off of a pass from Johnson. Foul called, and after the whistle, McGowan's tried to rip the ball away from Fritz. Fritz went down, as did McGowan's. It's going to be interesting to see if the officials, I know they're going to go look at this, if they come away with a dead ball technical foul here because the whistle is blown. It's after the action. And would the technical foul go on McGowan, who picks up the common foul, but the extracurricular activity afterwards could warrant more. You hear the whistle, and then a good second or two afterwards. Yeah, it's, it's clearly after the whistle. But will that be deemed really excessive? Because, again, both guys have, won't let go of the basketball. McGowan just happens to be the stronger player. And I'm not saying that, you know, Fritz was actually trying to pull it away from McGowan, but he was not releasing the basketball as well. So McGowan definitely was trying to take the basketball away at that point. Pittsburgh currently on an eight nothing run. And I'm really curious how the officials are going to determine this. Well, it's not a flagrant. So one thing we know is it won't be a flagrant foul, but it could be a dead ball technical foul, which I believe is a class B technical foul where you get the two shots. I'm sorry, one shot and the team maintains possession. But well, you see both guys trying to hang on to the basketball, but McGowan's was a little more aggressive in his attempt to get the basketball away and happens to be stronger than Fritz. And the result of Fritz going down is really what brought in, because there wasn't an altercation between the two players. No. But the result of Fritz falling is what brought the officials in, basically holding everyone back. There was never really a true altercation that happened. They weren't really battling for the ball, though. McGowan just went in and tried to rip it away. Here comes Tim Comer to explain to Corey the details. Jeff Capel getting the word from Earl Walton. And now Corey Alexander has the details from Tim Comer. So it is a dead ball technical on Trey McGowan's, but it actually will be considered a flagrant one, which I said it wouldn't be earlier because I didn't think that would be a flagrant play, but it is a flagrant one, dead ball contact technical on Trey McGowan. So it will be the two shots and the basketball back for Kinesis. Well, the good news for Pittsburgh is that's first foul of the game on Trey McGowan. So he's not in serious foul trouble, but in a game where Pittsburgh was just starting to seize momentum, this gives the Golden Griffs an opportunity to make some free throws, have possession, and have a big possession here. Well, it could be a four or five point possession, and now we become a 12 point lead for the Panthers. An opportunity at the free throw line, of course, and getting the basketball back can definitely help Kinesis, but this one is. Jaco Fritz, one of three true freshmen on this Canisius roster. Played at DME Academy in Florida last year. Drains a pair at the line. And that's the first part that you have to take care of if you're Canisius. And they've done the job at the free throw line, of course, getting to the free throw line and making more free throws than the two previous 
contestants of the Panthers have for the full game. So now the zone defense, can Kinesis find a way to master the zone because the zone has definitely made it difficult for them to be able to move the basketball. We've seen a significant amount of turnovers over the last few possessions. Fritz throws up an air ball, but the offensive rebound creates another possession. Two on the shot clock for the Golden Griffins. Corey, one last piece of bookkeeping from that technical foul flagrant situation. Two personal fouls assessed to Trey McGowan's. So he now has two fouls in the game. It's fortunate for Pittsburgh he didn't have any earlier to put him in foul trouble. Now, to beat the buzzer, Johnson can hit. And here comes Pittsburgh. Murphy to the basket all around. And that's a breakdown because you have your point guard, Malik Johnson, taking the shot out of the corner and no one there to get back defensively. None of his teammates recognizing that ends up being an easy bucket for Murphy. Curry did not get away with the push off on Murphy to try to slingshot him around. You see Malik Johnson on the baseline. So, of course, the point guard can't be back. Akram Amin as well as Harid, neither of those guys recognizing that and getting back. And you see Harid with the left arm trying to clear out Murphy, picking up the offensive foul, another turnover for Kinesis. You're the basketball player. Thank you. It amazes me how often we see that foul with a guy throwing away an opponent. Usually it's on a drive where they clear out. That famous MJ on Brian Russell move that he got away with. Oh, I, I, oh my goodness. But, Are you serious? But, but oh, over yeah. and over again, every single game, you see an offensive player with the ball throw away a defensive player, and it's an obvious offensive foul. You sound like a true Wake Forest Demon Deacon hating on Michael Jordan, the Carolina Tar Heel, from the torment that he gave your school forever. He's the greatest of all time. And so, and you're going to talk about that play, and you're, the one thing you're going to say about that play, it was a push-off. I need a break from you. Well, right now, a good no, I need a break from you. It has a 10-point lead. I need a break from you right now. Somebody go to the market. I want to go. I've lost two homes in my lifetime. Both times, my independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Grubhub, America's leader in food delivery, just got better. Introducing Perks. Millions of dollars in deals and free food nationwide. Download the Grubhub app today and get free delivery on your first order. Hi again. That belongs to me. How you feeling? The answer on that one. He joked and said, I wonder if it's to make his, his wife look good. I don't know the point of the game, but no one ever knows the answer. He said his staff is in on it a little bit. But, but Evan, Corey, you, you always want to make your wife look good, right? You do, and you also want to make your analysts look good. And that's what I try to do every time we work together. And you think I'm after you. Are you trying to make up with me now because I just put you in timeout? I'm, uh, that's exactly, I'm trying to reconcile. <laughs> You cannot reconcile with me by trying to say that Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan's iconic game six game winner over Byron Russell was a push off. Are you kidding me? That's not making up. That's blasphemy. Do you not trust what your eyes see? Yes, I do. I trust what my eyes see. I don't often trust what your eyes see. That's the difference between the two of us. <laughs> The only tangential point I was making, which I think you understand, is that offensive players unnecessarily push off when they don't need to. Michael Jordan would have scored even without a push off on that play. He didn't push off. Fair so enough. Again, you know, but I'll, I agree with you, and a lot of that comes from playing pickup in the summertime where there are no officials, and you get away with some things that are often offensive fouls. And, of course, when you have to play under the whistle, it becomes a problem. But in, in turnovers it, have been a tremendous problem for Kinesis here thus far in the second half. Just to note for our crew in the truck, it was about 11.40 in the second half when Corey said he agreed with me. Yeah, somebody needs to erase that. <laughs> Pittsburgh up 11. Xavier Johnson still only has four points, but he does have eight assists 
for the Panthers. Entry feed off the mark and knocked away from Koulibaly. Canisius has the horses to make a run between Malik Johnson and Majesty Brandon, Yako Fritz. Here's Brandon in the corner for three. But the zone has slowed them down, but as we mentioned before, it is much more difficult to defensive rebound in the zone because you don't have a man as an assignment. So you're in a position to where you have to go seek out someone and box out. And that time, an easy putback for Fritz on the offensive glass. And one. The guards have more of a responsibility to go for rebounds in the zone? Not necessarily. I mean, guards, of course, have their they have the responsibility to get long rebounds because they're normally further away from the basket, especially when three-pointers are shot. They have longer rebounds, so that's normally the guard responsibility. It's going to be those three guys along that bottom line who are responsible for coming back in and picking up those rebounds. And Jeff Cape will not have to get for coming up with that foul on this possession is some one of the things that Pittsburgh hasn't done much of all year. But as you see, as the shot goes up, no one even near Prince. Off the inbound, Canisius with a chance for a three-point play. They're going to count that basket. And he thought a bounce play, no recognition. And again, it's the zone. And so in the zone, not knowing your responsibilities. And right now, of course, Jeff Capel has always been a man-to-man -man guy. You know, his days from playing at Duke, of course, coaching at VCU, at Oklahoma. And not to say he's never coached zone, sure. but they didn't play much zone a year ago with this Panthers team. And now as they're incorporating that into their defensive makeup, you know, there are going to be some mishaps, but they've had a number of them, especially in the offensive glass in this game. Ryan Murphy just snuck in between a couple Golden Griffins for the offensive oh, rebound, and now he's going to get to the line. Ahmed picks up the foul. We're into the fourth quarter of this game, and it is still very much a game. Ryan Murphy, the second leading scorer for the Panthers today. Now 15 points after that free throw. And an interesting guy to get to Pittsburgh. Started his career at Charlotte. And then instead of sitting out a year and transferring, went to junior college. And for, by playing in junior college, was able to come in immediately eligible at Pittsburgh. And has had a big impact for Coach Capel's team here in his first year. The team leader in three-pointers. One of the seasons thus far. Originally from California, comes across the country to Charlotte, and goes to junior college in New Mexico, and now here in Pittsburgh. Extra pass. Majesty Brandon knocks down the triple. And one of the things we've seen, Kinesis has done a great job on the offensive end of the floor when they have gotten opportunities. They've turned the basketball over so much in the second half, they just haven't gotten the opportunities. But they've been able to score the basketball extremely well. Jump ball, the arrow will keep it in Pittsburgh. Canisius now shooting 62% from the field in the second half. Well, great ball movement. When you see Malik Johnson, the extra pass to Majesty Brandon, who's able to knock down the corner three. Let's go to Meggie, who has more on Majesty. Well, you said earlier the Griffin was a majestical creature, so he goes right along with this team, right? Majesty, he's got a brother named Majestic, another brother named Dramatic, and the, the other brother, Chaz. Wow. Chaz, what do, we, what do we think about those four names? I mean, they wanted to name them something unique, right? Majesty and Majestic. Mama call him Majesty, I'm going to call him Majesty. We'll keep it like that. There's McGowan's nice little step back. And the, the challenge at the rim, once again, McGowan's getting his shoulder square, getting downhill, and attacking the paint. Even though he goes to the mid-range and not getting all the way to the rim, I love Trey McGowan's when he's in attack mode. Harid tees it up and buries the three. And Harid has shot the basketball very well from beyond the arc in this game. Now his third three-pointer. And, of course, his dad was a big-time scorer at Syracuse 
Canisius has two sons of Orangemen on their team. Sam Routens did not make the trip. He's hurt. Murphy's three in and out. ACC fans, Pittsburgh fans, I'm sure remember Andy Routens, who was a sharpshooter for Jim Beheim, and obviously his dad, Leo, is one of the greats. Now a commentator with Raptors TV in Toronto. Against the zone, they get it to the middle. Nice pass to the corner. Textbook possession, capped by the Brandon three. And now you see that Kinesis has settled in against the zone defense. Great job getting the ball in the middle of the floor to a playmaker. And when the zone constricts, you're able to find guys on the exterior to knock down threes. And just like that, this is a one possession game. Champagne to the bucket, comes up short, but there's Brown, he missed the layup. Canisius with an opportunity to tie with a three. And the officials are going to Yeah, I, I believe they're going to Tim Comer coming over. Earl Walton on that. That was a kick ball. And it was it was an intended kick by Trey McGowan. So Canisius will have the ball. When we return, it's not dramatic or jazz or majestic, it's Majesty Brandon keeping the Golden Griffins right with the Panthers. Hi there, Warby Parker here. As you may know, we sell eyeglasses and sunglasses starting at $95. But here's something you may not know. We accept FSA, HSA, and select insurance benefits. If you're ready to put those to good use, head to warbyparker.com or one of our retail locations to shop prescription eyeglasses, sunglasses, and contact lenses. It's a three-point game at the Peterson Event Center with seven and a half minutes to go. I ask you, Corey Alexander, what is Canisius doing right to stay in this game? Well, they, when they're handling the basketball, they're getting their opportunities off the offensive end of the floor. But on this possession, the last possession of the, before the timeout, you see Trey McGowan sticking out that right foot, kicking the basketball intensely. So Tim Comer coming in and helping Earl Walton with screens from that call with the correct call and it will still have 25 seconds remaining on the shot clock for Kinesis in a one possession game and an opportunity to tie or cut this to a one point lead for the Panthers. Kinesis has actually won two of the previous three meetings against Pittsburgh all of them before the 1980s. Inside Fritz brings the Griffins within one. Canisius shooting <laughs> in the second half, 67 percent. Baker Johnson attacks the basket and getting to the rim. And this is where Pittsburgh is at his best. When Xavier Johnson is attacking, when Trey McGowan is attacking, not playing basketball, looking for three-point shots, but getting into the lane and looking to score or finding their teammates but staying aggressive. And that's not, so honestly, we haven't seen enough of that from Xavier Johnson in this game. I was just gonna say, there's a Pittsburgh fan out there sitting on his couch saying, why doesn't X do that every time? Well, I don't think he can do it every time, but he can do it a lot. And of course, opposing teams set their defense to try to keep him out of the paint, but he needs to make sure he hunts those opportunities because of course, they're just a better team when he's getting into the paint for himself or for his teammates. Johnson draws another foul. He's heating up at the right time for Pittsburgh. Well, and of course, this shot is not uh, not conventional, but it's still it's him being aggressive, snaking the screen and roll, and of course, recognizing the contact, just throwing it out to the rim. But you see the intent for him to go past defenders and get into the paint. And it's not always going to be for a shot, but he gets shots for his teammates when he's in attack mode like this. The foul was on Malik Johnson. Corey, he is one of four Griffin key players that has three fouls right now with six and a half to play. Well, and of course, Malik Johnson, we talked about him being the head of the snake. White looking to detonate draws the foul. But that's one of the ways you have to go against Malik Johnson because he is a scrappy defender. 
And because he's so important on the other end of the floor for Kinesis, you have to attack him to try to get him in foul trouble and get him off the floor. And Johnson drops another dime to White here, who tries <laughs> to find his way on the sports center. Unable to make it happen, but still connects on the first free throw. First foul on Koulibaly. Jelani White, his career high was 20 points against UIC earlier this season. He's having another good scoring game today with 14 at the moment. Pittsburgh more free throw attempts than Canisius, but Griffin's getting on the line more than the typical pit opponent. That's a jump ball tie-up, and Canisius ball. Johnson got his hands in there on Johnson. And that's who he is. Malik Johnson is scrappy. He's not afraid of contact, and he's definitely not afraid of competition. He knows about Xavier Johnson, the reputation, and he sees Johnson put the basketball in front of him. Does a great job tying it up and regaining possession for the grips. Under six minutes. Malik Johnson leaves it in the corner. Three would not go for Harid, and the foul is on Canisius. Pittsburgh ball. But you see White going for another offensive rebound, and of course, the success that they had in the first half. I don't blame him for going after Champagny. I believe is going to be on the on the line. No, it won't be. Kubali will be on the. Yep, you're going to get to see the uh, eighth free throw attempt in Abdul Kareem's career. But this is a one and one. Hence, I didn't say the eighth and ninth. Well, again, and I, the reason I said it was a one and one because to recognize that he's not a very good free throw shooter and that he is. And Kinesis had to be aware of that. But right. now on the other end of the floor, you put Malik Johnson at the free throw line. As McGowan's picks up the foul, and there is contact, and that's his fourth. And you talked earlier about, of course, he got the two fouls with the play where he got the technical foul with the flagrant. So Malik misses a free throw number one and one. He's a much better free throw shooter than Abdul Kareem. The team's trade missed front ends, and it's still a three-point Pittsburgh lead. I hope they don't remove the one-on-one -on -one from college basketball. I think it's a nice quirk in the game. For the second time in this decade, I'm going to agree with you. Hey, <laughs> we're finishing strong. <laughs> Xavier Johnson met nicely by Jelani White, who came to help and stood straight up. Now, the difference in that possession was Johnson getting into the paint in the earlier one is he took on five different opponents and missed Opportunity for White. Yeah, great pass by Fritz, and then White missed the slam. When you think about it, Malik Johnson misses the front end of a one and one, which could have been two points. And that slam, this could be a Kinesis lead right now in comparison to having to defend Pittsburgh and giving them an opportunity to extend their lead. Tony missed the floater. Koulibaly keeps it alive. Shot clock did reset to 20. McGowan's, remember, he's playing with four fouls. Rejects the screen, takes it to the rim, draws the ball, and scores two. Big play by Trey McGowan's on that possession, and even more important, picks up the fourth foul on Malik Johnson. Underneath the basket, McGowan's once again snaking the screen and roll. And Malik Johnson unable to get in a position to take that charge. Because he doesn't leave the floor, it's going to be an automatic blocking call on Johnson. And McGowan's at the free throw line with an opportunity to increase the lead to six. They're going to send both teams to their benches.
Well, we have a moment. I want to remind you what's coming up next. The Pitt Panthers women's basketball team looks to finish their year strong. They are in Chapel Hill to face on the resurgent Tar Heels. It's 2 o'clock tip from Carmichael Arena. New head coach Courtney Banger along with Janelle Bailey, who's averaging nearly 16 points a game. Trying to help UNC finish the year strong. Asia Bug, the leading scorer, averaging 14.9 a game for the Panthers. I was hanging out, Corey, with your cousin Kenny Brooks yesterday, the head coach at Virginia Tech down in Tallahassee. I taught him well. Florida State's got a really good team. But the Hokies are still 10-2 and two in women's hoops. And your cousin Kenny reminded me to tell you that while you may have played in the NBA, he was the first draft pick for the Waynesboro YMCA. I would disagree with that once again. <laughs> Only because he was older. He might have been the first draft pick when I was like seven. You guys can't be that close because he's actually really nice to me. <laughs> you haven't taught him to, to you know, disagree with me? I said I taught him well. Yeah. 76-60. Uh, 76 70 excuse me Pittsburgh gets the stop they're up six after the McGowan's three-point play looking high tough catch and then the big foul from Hitchin on Tony catch your breath everybody the final four minutes on the other side of this timeout hit by six I wish I could try these glasses on first. What if I said you could? I would then say how? I would then tell you to use Warby Parker's virtual try-on. I would then use Warby Parker's virtual try-on. What? <laughs> well, oh, they're not real. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Are you from the future? <sighs> Where am I? I need glasses. Here at the Peterson Event Center with Pittsburgh in front of Kenesha, 76 to 70. Evan Leffler, Corey Alexander, Maggie Hetzel, and hey, there's Ryan Shazier, one of Pittsburgh's favorite sons, longtime Steeler, taking in the ball game this afternoon. Wonder how he's feeling about my Clemson Tigers taking care of his Ohio State Buckeyes yesterday. I was going to go there, but I didn't want to upset our producer, Eric Kendall, who's a good I, Buckeye fan. I did, because he was going at me just like you were earlier. <laughs> so, of course, even though our guy Eric Kendall's an Elon grad, he's a huge supporter of the Buckeyes. First broadcast I ever did with Eric Kendall, who's doing a great job in the truck today, was at noon the Saturday after Thanksgiving a few years ago. During the Duke, uh, the Ohio State-Michigan game, we were forbidden from giving him any updates. He was going to avoid the score to watch it when he got home. And, hey, I think the Buckeyes won that year because they beat the Wolverines every year. <laughs> <laughs> Malik Johnson with the Golden Griffins trailing by eight. Finds Majesty Brandon for three. That's a huge shot. Beautiful find by Malik Johnson once again. Seven assists for Malik today. On his way to becoming the all-time leading assist man in this program, chasing one of the greats in Golden Griffin history, Frank Turner, who had 616 assists from 06 to 2010. Malik was exactly 100 assists shy of that mark today. So you figure about 20 games left in the year. If he averages five assists per game the rest of the way, his season averages five and a half. He should get there if he stays healthy. In the cool of Bali. Making a move to the rim, spinning to the bucket, everything but the finish, and then on the second try, he missed it too, but there was Tony to help him out. And when you get three opportunities on the offensive glass, normally one of them will go down for you. And Kinesis, of course, getting a bit of the medicine that the Panthers gave in the first half. Not this time for Brandon, and they call Hitchin for the push-off and the rebound action. Third foul on Hitchin. Hey, quick correction to something I said before the break. I believe I said McGowan's has four fouls. He only has three. Okay. That's what I get for listening to you. But, again, you're still my guy. That means a lot. I know it does. It should. Speaking of my guy, Lonnie Dale, our director. Yeah. We talked before the game. Now, this is my 11th year in television. 
and Lonnie maybe, you know, 100, 110 plus. But the first time that we can remember doing a Monday noon game. Do you have any recollection of doing a noon game on a Monday? It's not a common thing. A, a, a couple weeks ago, I did a, a women's game at 11 a.m. on a Monday. It was one of those education days where they had like 8,000 screaming SpongeBob SquarePants fans in the stands. Okay. That works. 21 points now for Champagny as Hitchin missed the layup inside. Good can challenge there by Koulibaly. He's given Jeff Cable some good minutes here in the second half. Well, and Pittsburgh has done a much better job on their defensive glass, which allowed them to make this a nine-point game. But if you think back, it was just a couple possessions ago where Malik Johnson missed the front end of a one-and-one, and, one, and then White missed a wide-open dunk where Kanishas had an opportunity to take a lead in this game. Before uh, the push-off from the Gowans, they got the foul on Fritz. That is not a push-off. That would have been called a hook. Hook, push-off, potato, it, potato. No, it's not. It's different. A push-off is extending the arm. A hook is wrapping Fair around. Fair enough. And it could also be considered a chicken wing. Four fouls on Fritz now. And you're right. My Wait, what? <laughs> Oh, two things just happened. Two monumental things just happened. One, you said I was right. You were. Secondly, you apologize? I was apologizing to the viewers. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. Makes sense. I knew you weren't apologizing. No. McGowan's extends the lead to 10. Two and a quarter minutes remaining in the year for Pittsburgh. And McGowan's now in double-digit free throw attempts. And again, that's the Trey McGowan's we saw all last season when he was going and getting 30 against Louisville and getting 30 against Florida State in big wins here at home, attacking the entire game. And it's going to be interesting to see if we can see that McGowan's back. And fortunately, he doesn't have four fouls because he would have fouled out after this one. And Malik Johnson is my guy. You know that. But so is Trey McGowan's. And Trey McGowan's won that battle. This is a clean pick right here great anticipation boom there is no foul on that play but they blew the whistle so it was a foul yes there was okay there was no contact <laughs> there was no contact on that foul malik johnson today 10 points four rebounds seven assists he's one of four Golden Griffins and double figures. Actually, five Griffins and double figures. Brandon with 20, White with 14, Kareem with 12, Johnson now with 11, Fritz with 10. It's going to be interesting to see how this Canisius team does when they get into the, as you call, my act. Because this team has some talent, no question about it. When you've got a leader like Malik Johnson, and then the talent of White and Fritz, and of course the wings and her read and a man, and of course the scoring ability of Majesty Brandon. This is a team that you would think can do some damage in conference play. I don't want to get too friendly, but I agree with you 100%. <laughs> now they've got some interesting pieces for sure. Malik Johnson, the leader of the crew. Jelani White showing his strength. Chance for three. This one's not done quite no, yet. No, it's far from oh, over, especially when you have the ability to offensive rebound the way that White does. And getting the job done defensively, coming over. <laughs> as Kubali tries to get a goaltending call on that one to no avail. And then White finishing off the offensive board through the contact. And an opportunity for the three-point play. Wyatt a shade under 60% line this year. Rims it out. Still a two possession game, minute 18 to play. Both teams have two timeouts left, both teams in the double bonus. Possession arrow belongs to Pittsburgh. Xavier Johnson steps around Malik Johnson and lays it in. Now, Evan, think about what we've seen here in the second half. Xavier Johnson, Trey McGowan attacking the basket. Champagne and Murphy knocking down three-point shots. 
That has to be the formula for success for the Panthers moving forward. Put the basketball in the hands of your playmakers and Johnson and McGowan's, and then, of course, surround them by shooters, allowing them to make plays. Foul given by Brandon with 32.9. That Xavier Johnson bucket feels like the final haymaker. And remember, Majesty Brandon had four, uh, excuse me, Malik Johnson had four fouls. So he couldn't really challenge Xavier there as the last line of defense. Our Toyota Let's Go places today, Justin Champagny. He's gone beyond the arc and made as many threes today as he made in the first 12 games of the season for the Pitt Panthers. The well, one thing that slows down for you, the game right now, and of course, being over the winter break and not having not having classes allows the coaches to have more practice time and time spent with their team. This is where you can see a level of comfort coming in for younger players like Champagny, and that has definitely manifested itself on the court here today. It started in the opening minute of the game where Champagny drained back-to-back -back threes, but Xavier Johnson has come to play in the second half and really taken over the game. And he's done so by getting into the paint, staying in attack mode, finding his way to the rim, and putting pressure on the opposing team's defense with his strength and quickness, getting to the basket, getting to the free throw line. And Xavier Johnson, if you look at his second half alone, 13 points of five for seven from the field. An opportunity to continue to add to that point total at the free throw line throughout the remainder of this game. Where Kinesis is in a situation where they have to continue to foul to extend it. If you've tuned in for Pitt UNC women's basketball, Tom Wormy, LaChana Robinson standing by from Chapel Hill. Pittsburgh trying to improve to 157 and 10 all time in non conference games in this building. And they're 24.7 seconds away from heading into the new year at 10 and 3. Shout out to my girl, the China, who no one can talk to her for the rest of the decade because she was followed by one Kobe Bean Bryant. Saw that. I had to retweet that. Of course, the China won the best in the business. She's great. Unfortunately, she has to work with Tom Wormy today, but hey, you know, we all got to carry somebody, right? <laughs> it's just a shame that the analysts are being pulled down by all these hard work and play by play guys out there. Now, the China is fantastic. Timeout called. By Canisius with 24.7 to go in an eight-point game. Pitt and UNC coming up. Is there someone that followed you on Twitter that that really made you incredibly, other than me, of course, that made you really excited? Uh, my notifications don't really show who follows me. I I turn off everything. I really don't want to know what other people have to say on Twitter. Okay. Or what they have to say about me. It's not always good, if you would imagine. <laughs> Seems like a wise move, actually. <laughs> Pittsburgh has Wake Forest at noon this Saturday, and then two road games at North Carolina and at Miami, and then three straight home games, Louisville, UNC again, and BC. That's the first six games in January. What's a reasonable expectation and hope? For this Pittsburgh team in that stretch. Well, honestly, with 20 in that stretch, of course, you know, I mean, it's simply about getting as many wins as you can, especially at home. Turnover gives the ball back to Kinesis. Need a quick three. Brandon Fires comes up short. And it will stay Golden Griffin's ball. Thank you, pardon. I think they're going to take a look at the monitor here. Jeff Anderson wants a do over on the call. So he's going to take a second look, which he is entitled to do, and it gives Corey a chance to answer the question. Well, now I've got to act like I was listening to what you said. So go back and tell me the schedule once again. As we see, the basketball does hit the rim there. And then, of course, afterwards, from that angle, can't really see. We saw Champagny swing at the basketball, but we don't know if he was able to contact it or not. I believe White did touch it prior to Champagny coming over.
show the Pittsburgh upcoming schedule after one more look at this last sequence. So White does touch it. Champagne does touch the basketball. That will go back to Kinesis. So Jeff Anderson had it correct, but give him credit. And as you look at this upcoming schedule for the Panthers, of course, they have to welcome Wake Forest coming into their building. And again, that's definitely a winnable game for the Panthers going on the road to North Carolina and Miami. Both winnable games. Right. Miami playing much better basketball. Looking for White. Tony was there defensively, deflected it and with the shot clock off. Pittsburgh will celebrate a victory to wrap up 2019. Champagne had 21. One of five Panthers and double figures. And two old friends share a moment at midcourt. Final score, Pittsburgh 87. Canisius 79. The Panthers head to ACC play this Saturday against Wake Forest.